Okay, problem number four. Now this is probably gonna be the most tedious problem, but it's really not that difficult. You just need to be really methodical in your moves. So this is like the worst case scenario. You're trying to make a slope intercept equation and all they give you is two quarter points, okay? So remember, all you need to tell a math story for most of the time is you need two data points. Well, there you go, x, y, x, y. So here you go. That's all you get. You get two corner points and I gotta make the slope intercept equation from this. Wow, so I gotta find both this. I gotta go y equals mx plus b. I gotta find both of these things. Yeah, you do. So what do I start with? Well, what's the only thing you can do when given two corner points? Boom, find the slope. So remember Mr. K's little cheat method, the loop-de-loop -loop method. I like to find the change in y over the change in x. They do the same thing right here. So let's make sure I get the same thing as they. They use the slope uh, in, uh, formula, the point slope formula thing. I like to just go change of y, change of x. So I'm going to copy the corner points down, which is the longest part of my situation, just copying the corner points down. 5 and negative 8. Okay. Change in y over the change in x, my little loop to loop method. Here we go. Change in y, I lost 9. Change in x, I added 3. That's the slope of negative 3. Boom. Again, it takes longer to copy the corner points than it does to find the slope. I'm halfway done. Okay, so I'm gonna save that one for later. There's my slope. M equals this dude, all right? So before I move on to the y-intercept, I'm actually gonna use my slope. So I know for a fact I have y equals negative three x plus b. Still need to find that dude. Well, here's kind of a weird little thing, friends, and this is really hard because it takes a little bit of confidence, okay? You can do this. If you notice in slope-intercept form, what are the other pieces? Slope and intercept, and then an X and a Y. Well, guess what, friends? They gave you an X and a Y and an X and a Y. So use the ingredients they gave you at your own leisure. Pick one of the points. So once you find the slope, pick one of these points and use it in your almost made equation. So I'm gonna pick two and one. I think they do the same thing right here. So I totally agree what they're doing. So my x value is 2, my y value is, and I'm picking this one. You can pick this one too, but 5 and negative 8, eh, those, eh, those numbers don't seem as nice as 2 and 1. So I'm going to pick 2 and 1. Okay, 2, I'm going to put you in here. 1, I'm going to put you in right there. 1 is going to equal a negative 3 times 2 plus a b. Why did I do that? Ooh, now I only have one thing less left to solve. Remember in algebra, if you have a bunch of numbers with one variable, you can remove all of those numbers to find that last variable. So all I did really is I found the slope, I put it into the equation. I picked an X and a Y, I put it into the equation. So I put three pieces in to find the fourth missing piece. Okay, so let's do some math here. One is gonna equal a negative six plus B. How do I get rid of a negative six? I'm gonna add six to both sides using my algebra skills, seven. There's my y-intercept. I have my y-intercept, I have my slope. Now it's all the way back to those first questions where it says, hey, here's the slope and y-intercept. What's the equation? Well, here it is. y is gonna equal a negative three x plus seven. Done, okay? So is that a lot of work? Not really, but you need to be very cold and calculating and meticulous, meticulous, is that a word it is now? You gotta be very focused on what you're doing. Okay, so I like their process. It's very, very correct. It's the exact same thing that I would do. The only thing you do is find the slope. Use the slope and pick coordinate points. And then once you have the slope and the y-intercept, make the equation. So slope, point, slope and y-intercept. Okay, so here we go. Here's the got it question. Okay, write the slope intercept. By the way, this is yours for the notes. Write the slope intercept given just two points. Oh, before I get too far, spoiler alert. Okay, spoiler alert, with slope intercept form, where's it at here? With slope intercept form, remember, uh, on a graph, okay, x always equals zero on this line, okay? X always equals zero on this line. When you plug in zero, you're gonna get the y-intercept. So like really quick, if I plug in a zero, negative three times zero is zero, y equals seven. So my y-intercept would be seven. So always be on guard for x equals zero. Quick example, if you're doing a problem like this and you saw a coordinate point that said, hey, one of the coordinate points is like zero and five. You know what that is right there? There's your y-intercept. Okay, whoops, if I can spell. 
That's your y-intercept right away. So always, always, always be on guard for x equals zero. Because if x equals zero, automatically gonna be your y-intercept. Why? Well, zero, five, one, two, three, four, five, is right there. There's your y-intercept. Do I know the slope yet? No, find it on your own. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. So here we go. So again, a little spoiler alert, just in case that happens. Back to the actual math, here we go. So first and only thing you can do is to find the slope. Here we go. Change a y, change of x, a little loop-de-loop -loop method. Here we go. Going from negative two to negative three as I lost one. Going from three to one, I lost two. Is that right? Yeah, here we go. So I lost one, lost two. Negative one over two simplified is one half. Okay, so there's my slope. So now I'm gonna go y equals one half x plus b. I still don't know what my y-intercept is, so let's find it. Okay, <clears throat> what do I do? Well, I have two pieces of information. I can use this xy or this xy. Meh, they're both kind of shady, so it doesn't really matter which one I use. They both have a negative, they're both kind of gross. I'm gonna go ahead and use the first one. Why, why, why make things complicated when you just keep them simple? So my y value is negative two, I'm putting negative two in there. I'm gonna put a three in right there, sorry I'm kinda running out of space. You should have more room on your notes. I apologize that I don't. Okay, negative two is gonna equal one half times a three plus a b. Three times a half is one and a half. So negative two equals 1.5 plus a b. I'm going to subtract 1.5. Sorry, I'm going right into the next notes. I apologize. Minus 1.5, minus 1.5, two minus a, a 1.5, I believe is a negative 3.5. Okay, so there's my y-intercept. There's my slope, there's my y-intercept. So what's the overall equation look like? I've got no more room to write it down. I'll write it down right here. Y equals a one half x minus a 3.5. I'm okay with decimal y-intercepts. I'm not okay with decimal slopes. Keep your slopes as a fraction so you can read them better, but I'm okay with decimal y-intercepts. There you go. Again, very meticulous process, but I know you can do it. That's the difficult, most difficult problem you're going to see with slope-intercept form.